Flashpoint South China Sea. In this video, we're going to look at the solitaire rules for the game. As you can see, it comes with its own solitaire booklet, which pretty much contains the rules that you would normally play in a two-player game, but from a solitaire perspective. So, unlike some games that have you know rules of play, and then there's like a retrofit to play solitaire, this one, you could actually just open the box and go straight to this to learn how to play the game if you didn't want to play it with people, <laughs> which sounds strange when I say it out loud. But uh, there you go. This is the solitaire rules uh, for the game. It does include eight additional cards and a solitaire deck to help as a randomizer for different functions. There is a play aid that is double-sided depending on which opponent you wish to play. So in this particular uh, game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the U.S. against China. I've already played one game with China against the U.S., and I, there's different levels of difficulty. I set up for the easy level, and I pretty much felt like I was getting crushed after turn one, but managed to score very well in the final scoring and ended up winning my first game on easy mode. So I thought this time I'd try flipping it around and playing easy mode U.S. versus China and teach you how to play the solitaire game. Now, setup is pretty much pretty straightforward. It's the same thing that you do in the multiplayer game with one difference. The solitaire opponent never uses a reserve, so you're never going to put any cubes in the reserve box for any reason. So remember that. That's a big, very important rule in the game when you're playing solitaire. So I've already gone ahead and set up my four additional cubes. I believe I put one in Malaysia. Uh, Indonesia, Diplomatic, Philippines, and Brunei. So that was my choice based on my opening hand, which didn't really dictate that. It just seemed like, uh, I guess it just seemed like a good idea. Now for the solitaire side, what we're going to do is we're going to flop cards from here and we're going to place four cubes in sequence. Uh, we're going to place two economic cubes and then two diplomatic cubes and we're going to use the influence here to uh, determine which um, which country is going to get those cubes. Well, as you can see, the influence card has uh, multiple uh, countries listed. It has all five countries listed in a randomized order. Vietnam is the top. Well, Malaysia is the second. So you take the top two, and that's where we're going to put our econ influence. So let's go ahead and take two cubes and put one in Vietnam and one in Malaysia. So there you go. We're going to flop a second card. Now we're going to do the same thing, but only put them in the diplomatic. And so that's going to be Philippines and Indonesia. So they went ahead and matched our diplomatic play in Indonesia, as well as the Philippines. So there is our opening start to the game. Now in this game, we also are going to need to set the victory point level at a, uh, a threshold according to the level of difficulty. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Double checking the rules just to make sure I got that correct, but I believe it starts at four. Okay, I did double check it. I wanna make sure I got it right. Uh, it starts at three when playing easiest mode as the US against China. When playing easiest mode China against the US, it does start at four. So that's why I was misremembering that. So now we have the VP set, all the cubes are set, opening hand, the, the uh, the opposition, I hesitate to call it a bot, but the enemy side, from the perspective of the player, always goes first each turn. So we're going to work through a number of sequences to establish what the uh, the Chinese card play is going to be. Now, the opposition never has, maintains a hand of cards. They're going to play their cards directly off of the deck, and then we're going to use the solitaire cards as a randomizer to help uh, guide some of the decision making. And the play aid and the rule book will be our follow on guide uh, to uh, make absolutely certain what the opposition is going to do. Now, before I begin, I do have to shuffle up the, uh, uh, the eight cards here. That's something that's new that's added to the sequence of play when playing solitaire. Uh, you got to make sure you do that after every uh, campaign turn is done. So we're going to go ahead and reshuffle that. And then we'll see where the hand of cards will take us. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reveal the topmost event card to see what it says. And then we're going to consult the play aid here to determine what we're going to do with it. First thing we're going to try to do is score with the card. If it can be scored, they're going to score the points and that'll end the turn. That'll be the end of it. 
Brunei is the scoring option. However, if China were to play it, they would not score points because only the U.S. has a cube there. So they don't have any ability to gain points. So we're going to move on. We're going to draw a solo card. So we'll flip this guy over. Solo card is flipped over. And what we're going to do next is check for friendly mode match. There are no discarded cards, so we can skip that. If there was a U.S. aligned card in a discard pile or excuse me, a Chinese card in the discard pile, we would see if the newly drawn card would match that friendly card. If so, then a number of things happen, all of which would be bad toward the player, okay? So you just, you would uh, uh, remove a fawn op if you could, um, you could remove, you would remove two of your influence, so there's, there's some bad things that happen to the player. Next, if the solo player's event card is a one-op card, if there are six uh, Chinese reclamations set tension to critical there's none of this is true but I'll just to show you what it does otherwise set tension to low we don't have one of those drawn so we're going to move on by the way if you did have that you would do that and you keep moving down list until it tells you to end the turn tension is not critical that case does apply solo indicates political warfare for China now I'm going to give you a, a shortcut here it really only matters if you're playing against China, because every single one of the cards has U.S. The U.S. is going to do a lot of political warfare. So be aware of that if you're playing the other side. So this one does not have a Chinese flag there. So no political warfare. Very good. If there was, we would flop a card, see if it was a successful uh, execution of political warfare. They're going to use all their ops for it, in other words. And, uh, and then we just follow the instructions from the rule book as to how to resolve that. If there's one failing to the game, it is that the play aids for the solitaire side are not as complete maybe as we would like them to be. You will probably reference the rule book a little bit more regularly when playing solitaire just to make sure you get the, uh, uh, the opposition plays correct. This gives you a summary, but it's not a, a complete uh, breakdown of what you're going to do with these options. So just be aware of that. So no political warfare. So now we reach the very end. We're going to perform operations and and turn. This is where the play aid doesn't really tell you a whole lot. So you're going to have to go to the rule book here. What you find for China, when you pull out the rule book, uh, solo operations, list of solo operations. I just keep the thing open to this because this is the page I refer to the most. All right, we're not playing the U.S., so we'll flip down here to China. We're playing against China. Solo opposition. If it's controlling a Chinese side, spend ops to play C, uh, cubes in CR spaces if tension is not critical and there are empty CR spaces. Once these conditions are not met, then you stop placing CRs and you spend the rest of your ops placing influence. The bot, let's just call it, the opposition is never going to put cubes in the political warfare. That's handled through a slightly different mechanism as I showed you on the play aid. So we got three ops to spend, and what they're going to do is they're going to spend one op to place into one of the three island groups. Now to choose which one, we're going to look at the card, the solo card we drew, and Paracel gets the top. So we're going to put one in there. That will ratchet tension up. And then it costs now two ops to spend to put another uh, CR down. And we're going to look at the, the list here. We've already placed in Paracel, so the next one will be Scarborough. So we'll go ahead and place that into here. And that's all three ops. Tension moves up to high. You might be wondering, why does it have three of them listed when you can only put two cubes down? Three ops is the most you get in the game. Well, the answer is if you're playing the U.S. side against China, conceivably you could spend three ops to place fawn ops in each of those locations. So that's why there's three listed there. So there you go. That is the end of the Chinese player side. We'll just go ahead and take that and put it in a discard. We'll leave this face up. The next card that they do, we'll draw a solo card for it, unless, of course, they opt to score. So at this point, it'll be up to us to make our card play. I'm going to look at my cards, and then we'll continue from there. All right, looking at my hand of cards, I've got a couple of the one-up cards to adjust the tension track. I've also got a couple of decent U.S. cards here, but the value of those is a little questionable at this point. I don't have three fun ups. I probably won't have three fun ups this turn. Uh, I could play it to score Brunei, 
which would give me one point, and it'd take one of my cubes out of reserve. I could do that. So this one, this event's not terribly useful. This one, the flag is probably the most useful of it. Uh, although it's the equivalent to a three-op card if I were to place diplomatic influence and spread it around three countries. I got two Chinese cards I'm going to need to dump. And kind of think I'm going to go ahead and take this guy here, play it, make a two-op play. Let's throw that in the discard. And I'm going to take two of my available cubes. Actually, no, I'm going to take two available cubes, put them into political warfare, which is really unnecessary because now I'm going to execute that. And hopefully we draw anything but a three. All right, we drew a successful draw, a two-up card. So that was a successful political warfare. That's going to have a number of effects. I'm targeting Vietnam, by the way, because we're going to clear out all of their economic influence. We're going to lock that country down. This goes to crit. Now we do take a third cube into reserve. So I'm not, not a huge fan of that, but we have a strong play now in Vietnam, and uh, we'll, we'll see what... And plus, the tension means uh, no more Chinese moves in these islands until they adjust the uh, status of the tension track. So we'll see how the opposition responds to our clever card play. All right, let's see what happens here. We're going to take the topmost card. We're going to check a number of things here. First, we check for scoring, and that situation has not changed. Brunei is not a scorable situation for the PRC, so they're not going to do that. So we'll draw a solo card. And then we're going to check for a friendly mode match, and there is one. So this is, this is terrible for us. I took a, I mean, it's early in the deck, but I thought, hey, there's already been one dollar sign. What's the odds they'll draw another one? Well, there you go. A one chance in three. Slightly or less than one chance in three. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Mode match. If tension is not critical, remove a fawn up. Tension is critical. Otherwise, remove two of your influence. So i got to remove two influence from somewhere. And I really don't want to remove from the Philippines... I think I'll remove Diplomatic from Indonesia. I'm going to leave Econ there. Uh, Malaysia, I'll go ahead and take one out of there. Uh, yeah, just take one out of there. Yep, that's what I'll do. So, that hurts. Hate it when that happens. By the way, the opposition will never play an event. Their own event, I should say. So that is kind of all abstracted into this, okay? That's something else to keep uh, keep in mind. So don't worry about the events when it's the opposition turn. They never play them. So the opposition does not draw a one-op card. We just keep moving. Tension is critical, so we skip number five. Line six brings us to operations. So they're going to spend two ops. They're not going to do Chinese reclamations because, A, they don't have enough ops, and the tension is critical. It, so what we're going to go ahead and do is spend them for... Uh, placing influence. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at, first of all, if any card is face down on the scoring, uh, the set of scoring cards, we're not going to place influence in a face down card. So uh, bear in mind that. So all countries are, are in play. So to break ties, you're going to look at this. And in the first and second campaigns, you're going to place econ influence if and only if the econ scoring card is face up. So the econ scoring card, the economy scoring card is face up. So we're going to place economic influence and we're going to target the Philippines and then Indonesia. So Philippines gets one and Indonesia gets one. And that is the card play for the opposition. So you're getting a pretty good idea of how this works. It's, um, I mean, if you know how to play the, the two-player game, you'll pick this right up. This whole thing uh, flows right along quite cleverly. And just keep the rulebook open because you'll need to refer to it for placing ops and just double-checking a, a few uh, parameters. But more or less, this is how you play the solitaire game. But we'll go ahead and finish out this turn. I'll uh, consult my cards and make a decision, and we'll continue on. All right, after looking at my events, I think I'm going to go ahead and play the three-op card here. 
And I think what I'm going to do with this, I hate that they have CRs out there already and I'm not matching it. Um, that's a two-point swing if, unless I put something down. But to put something down, I'm going to have to um, lower the tension. And already they've failed to do um, political warfare twice on these solo cards. So I think the odds of them doing political warfare later on in this turn is higher. So I'm, I'm not really willing to risk... Um, that from happening. So I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a three up card. Can't put any fun ops down in the island groups, but what I can do is I can put economy back into Brunei. So if he plays an econ score card, he, right now he's going to score one, two, three countries. I would score two countries, and that's just an intolerable situation. So I think maybe what I'll go ahead and do is match him in Malaysia. And for my third op, I'm going to put one into political warfare. I'm just going to set it there. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe uh, my next play, my next go, I can use this ratchet tension down and then use this plus this for a uh, political warfare attack in the Philippines and wipe out his econ influence. That's kind of my, my game plan there. So I'm trying to set myself up for that. And we'll see where things take us. Now, at the same time, I'm also trying to keep like a match set of modes here in case there's something I can trigger that would help me more than what I have in my hand. So I'm, I'm also bearing that in mind. Again, like I said in my last video on the two-player game is there's a lot happening in this game despite the, sim the simplicity and the elegance of the rules. There's a lot to keep track of. So that's something else I'm keeping in mind here. All right, and they're going to pull another card. Wow, Brunei again. They've drawn Brunei over and over again. They're not going to score it. Might be handy for me, but uh, they're not going to score that. So what do we do? That will be make an interesting decision for me, by the way. So we're going to score uh, nothing for them. They're going to draw their solo card. They're going to check the mode. There's no friendly match. It's not a one-op. Can't do political warfare, so they're going to use influence. And where are they going to target their influence? They're going to target on the economy because there's no score. Uh, the economy score card is still uh, face up. And so all countries are really in play except Vietnam is locked. So we're going to go into Brunei. And they're going to match us there. Next we're going to look at Vietnam, but we can't place there because it is locked. So they will skip it and move to Malaysia. And so in Malaysia, all the econ spaces are filled. Now what? Well, in that case, you just put it into the other spot. We'll put it into diplomacy. And, uh, and vice versa. If you were, if the econ scorecard was face down and all the diplomacy were filled, you'd put it in the economy. And that's how you will resolve this. So that's their play. And it's back over to us. Now, we have an interesting decision because we can match this Brunei card. And we can get us a point. And we can do that by throwing down this guy it's a one-up play i think this is a good play because we can wipe well now we aren't going to score brunei never mind because it just matched us there well that stinks ah <sighs> hmm i feel like we need to uh wipe him out in the philippines and try to score philippines this turn and i think we can manage that with a little bit of luck so let's go ahead. It's unfortunate he targeted Brunei because that would have been that would have been a clever play. Here's why: I would have gotten a point out of it, and I would have gotten one of my guys out of reserve. That would have been nice, but we can't do it. So let's go ahead and adjust the tension level, and let's do political warfare in the Philippines. So we're gonna take this. Just the tension. This is where it gets tricky for me. I'm like, I really don't know what's it, what's the best move here. I kind of want to keep it high. Maybe expensive for the, that, that. That's a three op play. It takes three ops for him to play into the island groups there. So let's just let's risk that. We're gonna take us one of our cubes. Now we have two in political warfare. Target the Philippines. And what we really want to do is draw anything. But a three, we do. Again, when you draw these randomizers, make sure you don't throw it in the discard. It goes in the bottom of the deck. There's always 12 cards that never get pulled, and that's your randomizer for these. They get cycled around. And uh, so we're going to wipe out all of his influence. 
and we're gonna lock it now. All of our, whoops, these guys go away. All right, so that's what we'll do there. Now, if that situation remains unchanged, we do have a nice scorecard here to, to pad our lead with, but there are matters of concern for me in uh, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. He can score on those. He can score the economy. No, he can't anymore. I would score the economy. I would have Philippines and Vietnam. He has only Indonesia. So that's our card play. Back over to them. Let's pull a card. We draw a two-up card. Can they score it? Uh, Malaysia, three to two. Yes, they can. So they will get a point. Malaysia will get flipped over. And that is the end of their card play. So back to us. Hmm. Well, now Malaysia's out of play. We have four, three, I can get two points for the Philippines. I think that that's worthwhile doing. I mean, he could match this card. That's the reality. But if I wait later to later in the turn, um, the situation could perhaps um, degrade. He could start, I don't know. He might pull stuff out of there, I don't know. Hmm, I know I don't want to bring things to critical because I already got somebody and I already got three cubes in reserve. I don't want to put a fourth one in there. So I think I'll go ahead and score it. Take the two points. Bring us up to four. And flip this guy over. Back to him. All right, now we got something interesting. It's not a, not going to be a mode match, so it can breathe a sigh of relief there. Mode matches in the solo game is kind of like the equivalent to nasty events when you're playing the two-player game. So no mode match. Is he going to score? Econ. I've got two. He's got one. He would not score that. So he's going to skip the econ, and instead he's going to flop a card. It is a one-up card. So if there are six CRs set tension to critical, there are not. There's only two. Otherwise, set tension low. Boom. Okay, next. Tension is not critical, so the card indicates political warfare, which it does. We are going to attempt political warfare. If it's successful, we'll end the turn. So he's going to try it, and it is a success. Son of a monkey. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Uh, bummer. All right, so it is a success because he, only, he had to draw one, basically, for that to be a success. So where is he going to target? Uh, I'm going to have to check the rule book just to be certain. I think we use this, but I'm not positive. Okay, after consulting the rules on pages uh, 14 and 15 from the solo rule book, basically what you're going to do is you're going to target, uh, first of all, you want to target countries that, you know, have a face-up scorecard. So... Malaysia's out of play, and Philippines are out of play. So he's not going to target those. He's going to try to target one of the others. He's going to try to target a country that has three of the same kind of influence in it. So which ones have three? There are none. Uh, so you next you look at countries that have two influence in them among those who are available, and Vietnam is the only one that fits that criterion. Now, if there's more than one, then you eventually break it down using the influence Start the top and work your way down on the uh, card you drew for the solo card deck. So he's going to hit us in Vietnam, and this is going to hurt. So what he's going to do is he's going to bump our cube out and just wipe us completely out of Vietnam. So we went from having a nice little cushion lead there to having a, a two-point deficit. So that's ugly, and the intention does increase because it was a successful political warfare attempt. The randomizer card is placed again on the bottom of the deck, which is hard to do with one hand. Boom, there we go. Oh, that was unfortunate. So next, it is me. I put one diplomat in each of three countries. So I can't get anything into Vietnam through normal op play, but this allows me to get around it. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Let's get around that by putting one U.S. diplomat, diplomatic influence in each of three countries. So let's put one into Vietnam. That helps offset that a little bit. And I like the idea of matching up in Indonesia. Brunei hasn't scored yet. I don't have the ability to score it. Let's go ahead and match them in Malaysia. And uh, that just brings us up to parity. Well, not quite in Indonesia. All right, that's our play. His last play of the turn. Throws down another one. All right, he, he's already scored Malaysia, so we're going to go ahead and draw one more of these. And again, solo card. Check for friendly mode match. None. 60 yards, none. Otherwise, the tension too low. He's going to put a CR down. That's what he's going to do, punk. He's going to put a CR down. All right, so if tension's not critical, indicates uh, political warfare, nope. He's going to do ops, and with his ops, because he can, he will put down a uh, uh, reclamation in the Spratly Islands per the priorities on the solo card. So he's going to hit us here, and again, achieves a little bit of a lead in that particular theater. This is worrisome. He's got so many CRs down so early in the game. Attention goes up to medium. So there we are. Our last play, don't have a lot of really great options. Oops, let's discard that. Obviously can't score Malaysia, it's out of play. I could put a fawn up down, but what good that would that do? Because it's just gonna go away at the end of the turn. Same thing with economic influence at this point. So really I'm relegated to just doing a diplomatic play, one cube. The question is which country? So um, can't put it in Vietnam. Could put it in Malaysia. Let's match them in Indonesia. I think that that's our best play. And that's the end of the turn. So now I'll draw six cards. Let's just imagine I draw six cards. I'll move on from there. We'll flip the solo cards face up. Again, we're using the sequence of actions here. This will walk us through it. Uh, locks and fawn-ups go away. So that lock goes away. That lock goes away. I have no fawn-ups on the board to put away. I tend to avoid those early in the game, but I guess sometimes it makes more sense than others to have them early. Late in the game, it's essential. All right, so the fa uh, fawn ops and locks are gone. Friendly, econ, loss in each country. Every country, you lose one econ. So I'm gonna lose one, two, three, four cubes net. So I lost two net cubes out of the Philippines there uh, through attrition. They're going to lose one, two, three as well. So their, their position degraded as well. And that will be that. The attention comes down. Campaign moves up. And there you have it. So at the end of the, of the turn, going into campaign turn number two, Philippines is a tie. Vietnam's a tie. They have a one-point lead in Malaysia. Indonesia and Brunei are tied. So that is our situation. I feel like I survived turn one, but it's not an ideal situation. Hopefully we can turn this around in turn two. But we'll see what happens here. Flopping the card now. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Well, that's uh, less than ideal. So... <laughs> That's this scorecard here. We compare, compare the CRs and the font ops, and they're going to get three points. One, two, three. Okay, well, that was ugly. And that's the end of their turn. So I guess there is that. Uh, well, that changes the calculus for me then. Uh, looking at my cards, I got two cards with which I can manipulate the tension track. Um, I also have two of their events that um, you know they might they might play end up triggering that and uh, removing some of my uh, support from country, some of my influence. So I, I probably want to be careful with those. I've got a card here that will put Fonops down in Scarble Shoal, which gives me good uh, position in the Philippines. Uh, let's see. 
This one moves Chinese diplomatic influence to available and places two U.S. diplomatic influence. You know, um, I think all things considered, this is probably a good opening play for me. And uh, we'll just see where this takes us, I think. So let's go ahead and play this guy. Philippines boosts military budget. So two fun ops, Scarble Shoal, which gives us a pretty good lead in the Philippines now. And that will bring the tension to low uh, per the event. Remember, the event always takes precedence over the rules. So that's our first card play. Moving to their second. Vietnam. They're not going to score it. So let's see what happens here. I draw a solo card. It is, there's no friendly mode match. It's a one-up card. Are there six years? No. Otherwise, it's tension low. It is at low. Tension not critical. Indicates political warfare. Attempt political warfare. So let's go ahead and put this in the discard. It is a failure. So... We know there's at least two three-up cards in the bottom 12. I'm not sure what you do with that information, but there it is. <laughs> so it fails. That doesn't end the turn. So we're going to perform operations, and they're going to place a CR. And they're going to choose... I believe they're going to do a CR. Let me double-check that in the rule book. I think they're going to do a CR even though the uh, scoring card's down, but let me just double-check. Yeah, I did confirm in the rule book that we do place the CR, so he's going to go ahead and put one into the Spratleys, I believe. Which I didn't really want to see happen, but... Because anything I put in here, I'm going to lose this turn. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I guess I'm, I'm trying to score some points back, and I can hit the Philippines with a good score here. Uh, especially in light of that last play. So, tension's up one. Let's go ahead. Uh, I don't see room for an economic score. Yeah, I think it's a wash on uh, the economic front. Brunei, I don't have opportunity there. I think now's a good time. I can get two points out of the Philippines. I, th I say let's do it. So let's get the two points. We're going to play this card just for its score option. Boom, boom. So we're back up to three. And now Philippines, whoops. Philippines scorecard is face down. There we go. All right, his next turn. He's not gonna score Brunei, no one's in there. You know, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but apologies if I'm not. Uh, of course it's a mode match. Why wouldn't it be? So it's a mode match. This is just going to be one of those games. So this is easy mode, but I feel like it's defeating me. <laughs> of course it's going to be that. Um, it's a mode match. Tension's not critical. So I'm going to remove a uh, fawn up. There's only one to remove. So, well, it's my choice which ones I remove. So, But we already scored the Philippines, so I guess it's not all that bad. And... What else is he going to do? It's not a one-up card. It's uh, opportunity for political warfare. So unless they draw a three, they're going to fail. Ooh, hey, how about that? Well, you know what? They swung and a miss uh, a couple times now. I think three times now on political warfare. So as Jerry Seinfeld would say, that's a shame. Let's go on to placing influence. And they're going to place a CR. They have two ops to spend. Tension's not critical. So they're going to put a CR down in the Paracels. So i got to watch Vietnam now. Dang, they are just setting up shop. This is going to be brutal. If they score that twice on turn three, I will lose this game. I, I, I don't know how to dig myself out of that hole. Wow. Okay, so that is the end of that. The tension goes up to high. And I don't know that it's worth, yeah, I just don't know if it's worth me uh, putting any uh, fawn ops down at the, at the present time. So it might be time to go ahead and move Chinese diplomatic influence to available, place to U.S. diplomatic influence. I can go ahead and place this down and do some uh, 
uh, get some ground covered. Um, maybe set up another score opportunity. All right, so let's move Chinese. Let's play it for the event. Um, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm pausing a I minute, mean, I'm, I'm reconsidering playing the event because they don't have a whole lot. I'd rather take something out of here. They don't have any influence in Vietnam, so they have basically a one-point swing there. Oh, if I took one out of here, then they got three to two. I put one there. Yeah, let's play it for the event. I'm gonna. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the one diplomatic influence out of Malaysia. I will then take and place two of my own. I'm gonna put one in Malaysia. That makes this a wash. So scoring opportunities diminish, and I'm gonna put one in Brunei. If they don't match that, I'm gonna score it, and it'll help me get a car or get one of my cubes out of reserve. So that's my long-term plan there, such as it is. Okay, they're going to pull a nice big fat card and probably wipe me out of some place with political warfare, I think. All right, it's not a uh, scorable opportunity. So we check and draw a... Oh, no political warfare. Okay, tension is not critical. Da, 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 da. It's not a one-up card. All right, operations. Well, they're going to go ahead and put in a CR, and that costs them all three. So they have, yeah, they have set up shop in the South China Sea. That, that's their play. And, of course, they don't have a reserve to worry about, so um, that's where they are. All right, so our fourth card. I think I want to save this one to last. Um, what do we want to do here? I think we go ahead and go with my original plan, score Brunei. So we're gonna go ahead and flop Brunei card down. That gets us one point. Whoops, wrong way, that way. Get a point back, so we've offset some of that damage, and as a bonus for that scorecard, you do get a, one of your cubes out of reserve. So it's almost like getting an op in addition to scoring. So that makes it a very efficient one-op card play. All right, their next play is a dos, and it's not one I can trigger. Dang. Well, it wouldn't have helped me anyways. All right, so two ops. They are going to score Vietnam. So they have one point advantage, so they get that point back. Now Vietnam has been scored. But that does yield some operational tempo to moi. So what to do, what to do, what to do? Well, one of the things I'm considering here is I have two economic scores. And do I take the risk... I mean, anything I throw into the economy, I'm going to lose at the end of this turn. We're, we're getting down to the end of the turn. So I'd rather have diplomatic support in some of these countries. You know, thinking long term. He doesn't have enough presence, influence, economy, di um, diplomatic influence. He doesn't have enough of that, I think, to warrant a political warfare attack, nor could I do so even if I wanted to because of the uh, state of the tension. Um, kind of at a loss as to what to do here. So let me just kind of um, look at what I'm gonna lose. At the end of this turn, I'm gonna lose one, two, three cubes. He's gonna lose just one. Yeah, diplomatic influence is really what I need. And I don't know that um, shifting out of critical is to my advantage so what do i do i'd really like to take the risk that i could score he's not in a scoring position unless he has malaysia i might leave him that opportunity and try to uh, get an economic sequence of economic points out of this because i got I could put down two cubes with this. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, oh wait, no, this is a wash. He's not gonna score that one. 
I just don't want them to block what I'm going to do. And the chances are the AI is going to block what I'm going to do. I want to put down, if I can, I can get an edge in economy in Vietnam, I have one in Philippines, I can get one in Brunei. That gives me one, two, three countries with an edge. He has one. That's a net two points to me if he doesn't block that. Of course, you lose it all. But he goes first anyways, and there's a high percentage chance he wipes out my diplomacy anyways. Let's let, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's there and there and just see what happens. All right, he plays. Can he score? Oh, the Philippines has already been scored, so he's not going to do that. Solo card. Okay. No friendly mode match because he has politics to the card I played was economy. It's not a one op. Tension is critical. So it's going to be operations. And he's going to place uh, cubes for operations. And let's see the priority first and second campaigns you place econ economic influence cubes if there's room in the selected country unless the scoring card is facing yeah he's going to block me uh, let's see Indonesia hey I'm going according to this so he's going to go Indonesia he's going to block me in Brunei so I'm going to have now that's the end of his play so I'm going to have one two countries with economic edge I have more economy cubes than he does he's matched me in Malaysia matched me in Brunei and he beats me in Indonesia so I can play this card for just one cube somewhere or I can get a point and I think I just grab a point here so let's do it put that down face down back to four and that will finish up the turn. By the way, if I don't remember if I said it earlier in the sequence of videos, but you always shuffle this deck at the end of the campaign. So don't forget to do that. So I'm going to draw my six cards here in just a minute. We're going to flip all of these face up. And that was quite a bit of scoring that, that turn. Uh, more posturing on turn one. I feel like I ended the turn reasonably well considering uh, the damage that, that could have been inflicted. Um, I feel like I came out of that okay. So the next thing that's going to happen is we're all going to lose one economy out of every economic space. We lose our locks and I lose all my FOMP. So I lose a total of five cubes. So that's not ideal. He's going to lose one, two, three. Which sounds like, you know, it's two less than I lost. However, that pretty much wipes out his influence in a, in a couple of those countries. So, in the end of the situation, he matches me in the Spratleys because of his presence in the island groups. He's got one point in Vietnam, and he is leading me by two points in the Philippines. So I've got to make up some ground there. Really hoping to draw some cards that will allow me to deal with this crisis here in the South China Sea, because this is probably what's going to make or break me here. And uh, we'll have to just see how this pans out. Let's, let's play one more uh, one more hand and finish up this game. Well, this is my hand of cards. This is a pretty, I'm looking at it, I like what I see. I don't have uh, anything that removes any of his CRs, so that's, you know, a little disappointing because he has six cubes to my none, so he can score a max of four points uh, through the uh, uh, the CR font up scorecard. So I, I need to try to mitigate that. I mean, he's, the score right now is at four points. Uh, in my favor, so I need to um, I need to block that. If he scores that twice, you know, if he scores at the game at the game end, there's nothing I can do. He's going to score. Every card is going to be uh, assessed. But during this turn, if he scores that, that would be uh, very bad for me. Uh, I do have one Chinese event and one uh, tension level uh, manipulator card. But I do have a couple three-op cards, and I think that the three-ops is probably my best uh, play on those. And, 
you know, maybe they don't have a whole lot of this. This card would be better played earlier in the game when they're going after the economy. They're really not doing that now. Um, this one here, move two Chinese diplomat from Indonesia to available. This would be uh, cool if I had the most diplomatic influence in uh, the Philippines. It might be worth you know going after that early enough using another card, set up this event that um, has some ripple effects that uh, could help us out. All right, so the thing to remember when you go into campaign number three is that uh, your fun ops aren't going to be removed, your economic cubes are not going to be removed, and every single card is going to score at the end of this. So whether it scores during this campaign or not. So first card for them is Death of Vietnamese President. It's two up play, and they're going to score Vietnam instead because they do have a one cube advantage. So they're going to get one point and yield operational tempo to Mua. And uh, I like that. Now this one... Place one fawn up, move Chinese diplomatic influence from three countries to available. It'll put one of my cubes into reserve. I don't necessarily want to do that. <laughs> uh, debating whether to play this for the ops or the event. The event does put a fawn up down. Um, I, I don't know how much that helps me because I really need to get like, you know, at least three fawn ops in. And that's going to be hard to do with the tension track being where it is. And this will increase the tension and it'll put one of my cubes into reserve. I think that I probably am going to do uh, more damage to him if I play this for the, uh, for the op value. The other three up card I have is if I have more than seven diplomatic influence, I get to place three U.S. influence and move one Chinese economic influence to available. I think I want to hold on to that. Let's play the ops. I just the event's very attractive, but I kind of feel I'm going to get more bang for my buck if I uh, set this up right. So we're going to put one in the Philippines. Where else could he potentially score? I can still put a fawn up down. Um, probably want to go ahead and get economic influence there. And let's go ahead and that gives us three to two, three, three. Let's go ahead and match him in the Spratleys and yeah, we'll just take our lumps. So I put a lot of my cubes into uh, into reserve unfortunately but let's see what that where that gets us. Their play is a two up play. Indonesia is not going to score so we'll draw a solo card. It's not a one up play. Tension is critical and besides they don't have a PW option on the solo card so they're going to do um, they're going to perform operations, and they're going to basically place influence. And they're going to place it in countries that haven't scored. So we're going to look at the priorities here. Um, Vietnam would be a priority, except it's already scored. So they're going to put it in the Philippines. And in the third campaign, economic, unless there's no room. So he's going to put economy here. And then he's also going to hit it in Brunei. So that's his play per the uh, priorities on the card. So back over to us. Assessing the situation, they have a one point lead in the Philippines, they've matched this in Brunei, matched. We got a one uh, point lead in Malaysia. I don't know if I, do I kick that point or do I keep trying to block him? I think it might be a useful thing to uh, Might be a useful thing to go ahead and try to get some of our cubes out of, or some of his cubes out of those countries. Okay, if the U.S. has the most diplomatic influence in the Philippines, which it does, sorry, 
We have two Chinese diplomatic influence from Indonesia, two available. Well, that only gets rid of one of his cubes. Kind of feel like the ops are better. I, th I thought he would try to go in there, but so far this is not terribly useful. Move three Chinese econ to available, one US econ to available. This gets rid of some cubes, but he loses one, two, three. I only lose once, a net two, and I decrease tension. Let's try it. So he's basically losing all of his economic influence. And I just lose the one, and I get to choose. Well, I, I have no choice. It's going to be out of there. There's no economic influence in the region now due to COVID-19. This next play, oh, I didn't want to see that. Econ, nobody scores. Nobody scores, so we're going to flop. Oh, he's going to do political warfare. And he's going to be successful because there's no way to beat a three. Still draw a card. So, which country is he going to lock? He is going to lock uh, a country that hasn't scored yet and one where I have the most possible cubes. So, either Philippines or Malaysia or Indonesia. Facing the priority here, it is going to be Malaysia is what he's going to lock. He's just going to wipe me out of there. Brutal. Ah, oh, I could have scored it too. Oh, that is, that is like all kinds of bad. Hold on a second. Wait a second. I messed up the end. I forgot to decrease tension, and now it increases. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I did it right. Darn it. So that's the end of that. Well, that is, uh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> well, that pretty much makes this card not playable. Boy, do I start, do I start trying to get some more font ops in there? I can use this. I feel like I'm really chasing the game now. The game's getting away from me. And, uh, it's just ugly. Situation's critical. I don't want them locking another country. So let's go ahead and use this for, for ops, three ops. And let's hit them. Whoops. We're going to put, let's say Indonesia, one. Vietnam, one. Philippines, one. And which which is the one that scored? Vietnam, that's right. Okay. Let's just hit that, see what happens. His play is a one-up for Malaysia, which he will score. One, two, three to one, so he gets two points. And Malaysia gets flipped over. Back over to us, our last three cards of the game. Oh, this is getting tense. Oh. You know, I can hit him hard on the economy. I can get three points on the economy right now, and I feel like that is, it's not going to get any better than that, and I should do it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get three points. Boom, boom, boom. Let's hit the economy while it's good. Flip that over. That leaves Philippines, Indonesia, and Brunei available to score, and I have all of them. So let's see what he does. He's got two cards left. Ooh, Indonesia. He's not going to score it. It's mine. Uh, tension. There are six CRs. There are set tension to critical, which it is. He's going to do ops with it. And he's going to place econ influence in Mal not Malaysia because it's already scored. Nor Vietnam. Indonesia. Punk. All right. I got two cards left, both two ops. I can get a point for Indonesia right now by the play of that, or I can try to boost my overall position. I'm going to lose four points on this, assuming his last pull is not a card to score that. And I think I'm going to run that risk and try to boost my overall position, because I'm offsetting him on the economy. I say let's just keep... 
man, let's keep it up. Because if I if he matches this card with a mode match, I'm just gonna lose the fawn up and it's probably not a whole lot of skin off my back. So let's go ahead and do this. Two ops. Let's go, I want to have maximum economy points. I'll get a point for Brunei unless he matches it. I think he's got three to three. I've got two to two. Let's go ahead and hit Brunei because I could potentially score that twice. All right, his final card is Econ, which is already scored, so nothing happens there. Is it a mode match? No, it is not. So he's going to basically pretty much have this summarized now in my mind. So he's going to place two Econ influence and he's going to hit malaysia scored vietnam scored indonesia has not scored so he's going to hit both of, or one of those in indonesia blocking my econ support there and brunei dang it oh that is just that's wicked all right so my last play is this most diplomatic influence in the philippines move chinese Two Chinese diplomatic influence from Indonesia to available. I don't think that really helps me all that much. So let's just throw it down for, I can basically place one cube um, is what I can do. Because my cubes are in reserve, I don't get two cubes out of it. Or I just remove one of his cubes. I'm trying to figure out which is the most beneficial to me. Probably doesn't matter. So I'll just go ahead and play the event and take one out. I think that it probably doesn't matter ultimately. So that is the end of the game. Let's just see how it all scores out. I think he might have me. Let's see. So we're going to score each card individually one at a time. And so Brunei, we're going to score this guy. And I'm going to get a point for it. So we're good there. Indonesia, we're going to score that. I'm going to get two points. Now, here's where it's going to start to hurt me. He's going to get two points for Malaysia because he's got three to one. one. Boom, boom. It's back to five. Vietnam is a wash. Philippines is a wash. All right, econ is what I was banking on. All right, each country. No advantage, no advantage. Me, me, I get two points. Ooh, I'm going to win. He's going to get all four points for this. One, two, three, four. Wow. Very, very close game. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's it says that I was playing on easy mode. I felt like this whole game, I felt like this the system's kicking my butt. And, uh, you know, if he'd pulled uh, the, the proper scorecard, any point on that last turn of those last six cards, that would have done, that would have been enough to do me in because he would have gotten four points out of it. I would have ended up losing by one point. So awesome game. Great job on the solo game. This gives you a look at how to play the solo game and an example of it being played. And strangely enough, even won. So I'm Joel Toppin. Hope you enjoyed this series of videos. Hope you enjoy the game. Definitely recommend. Check out Flashpoint South China Sea by GMT Games.